This is Health Yeah, your weekly update on what's going on in the health, wellness, and medical world with Monica Robbins. Growing older brings changes to our bodies and especially our brains. So it's important to do what we can to make sure our brains keep in tip top shape. It showed itself in my conversations. I'd be trying, grasping for words. Millions of Americans are living with Alzheimer's or other related dementias. We'll share the steps you can take now to limit your risk of a diagnosis and keep your brain healthy. Plus the warning signs that you're having brain health issues, including a sign that shows up years before the first symptoms. And not all memory loss is a brain dysfunction. Some of it is completely normal. Like there should be a pill, it's no fair. Like how come we don't have things to help us? We'll take a look at all of this and more straight ahead in this week's Prescription for Life. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Monica Robbins. Nearly 6 million Americans over 65 have Alzheimer's disease or related dementias. That's according to the CDC. Dementia is when thinking issues get in the way of your everyday life, and it's not considered a normal part of aging. A new survey from Cleveland Clinic and Parade shows many Americans are concerned about their brain health. However, they're not talking to their doctor about it. We found a woman in Indiana who did just the opposite. Anne-Marie Tiernan recently talked with a woman who worried her senior moments could be something more serious. How have things been since she came to see me last? Oh. Mary Sullivan is committed to following up with her doctor after concerns that her brain wasn't working right. It showed itself in my conversations. I'd be trying, grasping for words. And the more I worried about it, the more it was happening. Oh, I was fearing dementia. I was, I was fearing early Alzheimer's. I was looking up all these things. A lot of people who come to our clinic, that's one of their main concerns and it's understandable. Mary took a free cognitive screening. When I say it was kind of fun, it was because it was like different games. I like puzzles. So there were word games, there's connect the dots. So are these things are the same or different? And they did get increasingly difficult. Fortunately, we were able to do the assessment and it really showed that her cognitive abilities were completely normal for her age. I slept well that night. <laughs> I did, and my husband was so relieved. And the screening also revealed that those senior moment symptoms were likely caused by her anxiety. And not fear, because I think the fear built into my anxiety, which made my symptoms worse. And that worry was actually causing more problems than any actual changes in her thinking. That knowledge made all the difference. You know, it really alleviated my anxiety. And then her symptoms subsided. Now she's learned to fuel her brain by staying active and engaged and staying in touch with her doctor if things get off track. There's nothing better than moving forward with that relief. This shows the importance of following up with your doctor. Now to our expert who goes a little deeper into the Cleveland Clinic and Parade survey and what we can do at any age to improve our brains. Joining me now is Dr. James Leverance, who is the director for the Center of Brain Health at Cleveland Clinic. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. A lot of people think there is a difference between Alzheimer's and dementia. Mm -hmm. Is there? Yeah, dementia is more of a broader term. It's like saying you have a headache, which could be due to a number of different things. Dementia is a change in your thinking skills that is affecting your day-to-day uh, activities and there can be Alzheimer's is one of the major causes but there are other things like uh, stroke um, something called Lewy body disease that can also cause uh, dementia how many different kinds of dementia are there uh, there are a lot uh, so uh, I think one of the things that we try to do at the Center for Brain Health really is to to examine people and try to figure out what's what are the underlying causes the other thing that we're starting to find out is that people, as they get older, tend to have more than one thing going on at the same time, which is making the diagnosis and accuracy a little bit more challenging. What is the biggest risk for developing dementia or Alzheimer's? 
Well, uh, I know, fortunately or unfortunately for its, its age is by far the biggest risk factor. For different kinds of dementia, there are different risk factors. For example, women are at slightly higher risk for Alzheimer's disease. Men are actually at higher risk for something called Lewy body dementia, the one that Robin Williams had, um, and stroke probably a little bit more in men. But aging clearly is one of the biggest risk factors. So there was a recent survey, 69% of Americans are thinking about the risk for developing brain health issues such as Alzheimer's and dementia at least once a year, mm -hmm. thinking about it, but they're not uh, even getting the care that they might need. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Well, there's fear, obviously, uh, as well as if people actually are having an issue, sometimes, particularly in Alzheimer's, they don't always recognize it themselves. Uh, what was interesting about the survey, I thought, was that across the age range, from 18 on up, people worried about this. So this wasn't just uh, just the older individuals, but people at any age. We do know it's starting about age 35, which most of us are a little above now, uh, that that sort of slowing and name pulling up and pulling up words is pretty normal. But when we really start to worry is when we start to see uh, forgetting of recent events and not being able to pull them up even with, with hints. What are the real warning signs that you should be worried about? And if you're really developing this, would you even notice them? The individual might not, so sometimes the family has to come, to, come in and say, we, we're noticing some changes. Uh, as I said, some patients, especially with Alzheimer's, don't have that insight that you want to have. Uh, probably the most common thing we hear about is an inability to recall recent events, not like immediately, but like, hours later or days later, maybe asking the question four or five times in a row, that sort of thing, is one of the things that we search for. Uh, and then inability to manage things that you normally would have managed in the past, so we bills, things like that. So we know women are at higher risk, mm -hmm. but you know, menopausal women, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of hormonal activity that goes into it. When do women need to be afraid that, okay, wait, me forgetting that I told my husband something, mm -hmm. you know, a, a couple hours ago and repeating it mm -hmm. is more than just my brain. Normal aging. Yeah, and yeah. my brain yeah. working overtime. Yeah, I think, I think again, one of the things that I like to hear is that with a hint, the memory is coming back. Oh yeah, I did tell you, I remember we were standing over by the fridge and I told you that. Um, so pulling that information up necessarily isn't necessarily a problem unless you just, it's like it never happened. And if it's multiple times. So what's the latest on research relating to treatment? I think the most exciting thing that's come out is that we have these new medications. Uh, one was just reviewed by an advisory panel for the FDA, and they recommended that it be approved. Uh, they don't have the final decision on that. Uh, but we have two medications that actually attack one of the processes that we know go on in the brain, the amyloid deposition. Uh, and so while the, the drugs are modestly effective in terms of slowing progression, I think it's the first of a number of, of medications that we can use to try to help slow the progression and you know, hopefully at some point cure the disease. What do you think is next down the road? What's next on the horizon? What I think a lot of us want to do is identify people who are at risk even before they develop symptoms. And so I have these new medications that can attack the disease even before you develop symptoms. And I think doing that in Alzheimer's, I think we want to try to do that in something like Parkinson's disease as well. And with these new markers, we may be able to identify. We know the changes in the brain are going on before the disease actually kicks in or before the symptoms do. So interact, uh, you know, intervening at that point could be really valuable. If you're north of 50 and you're mm -hmm. afraid that, oh my goodness, something might seem kind of off, is there anything you can do now mm -hmm. to start preventing what you are afraid of might happen later? As I mentioned earlier, we know that a lot of people with dementia have multiple processes going on. And so things that you can do for your heart health, for example, what's good for your heart is good for your brain. So exercise, um, monitoring your lipid levels, all those sorts of things. We generally find people are better off if they're a little more um, socially active, interactive, getting out there a little bit more. So even in retirement, you know, joining a club, things like that could be really helpful. And then monitoring your general health. The better your general health is, 
the more resilience you'll have to the effects of something like Alzheimer's so disease. Use it or lose it is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, sure. Um, how, how dangerous is watching too much television, you know, and, and that sort of thing? Um, I think the only downside of that is it's, it's good to have a little chill time, right? Uh, but I think uh, if that's the only thing you're doing and not interacting with the world and not getting up and working out or walking or things like that, that can be a negative. What about stress? Um, well, stress generally brings symptoms out, uh, doesn't necessarily cause a problem. Um, so getting that chill out time is important if, if any of us can fit that in somewhere. Uh, so those are, that's valuable, but in and of itself, stress doesn't seem to cause dementia. So if you notice your family member or loved one is, is starting to have those cognitive difficulties mm -hmm. and you want to bring them into an evaluation, but they're, you know, a little hesitant. Sure. How do you convince them? <laughs> Um, well, again, <laughs> you, you talk to them, maybe take them to their general doc first, maybe give the, a little sidebar to the doc and, and let them know that you're noticing a little something going on, and they can often get the, uh, the ball rolling, so to speak. What happens in an evaluation? Well, once they come to us at the Center for Brain Health, what we typically do is we, we do a, a formal evaluation of their thinking skills, their memory, et cetera. We check some blood tests that kind of look at things like B12 levels and others, th thyroid that could be a problem. And we'll usually do a brain image, to sort of see, are we seeing evidence of some shrinkage of the brain like we would see in Alzheimer's disease? Uh, that gets us started. And then we usually, after we've seen these and we meet with the family again, we may, detect, we may decide to do a little bit more detailed memory testing, like with a neuropsychological testing. And we may actually ultimately try to do a test that actually specifically looks at, do you have Alzheimer's going on? How long does an evaluation take? Well, each evaluation's not that long, I guess you could say, an, an, an hour for our original visit and a half hour for these follow-ups. Um, but it can take several months to get all that information put together. And then you're sitting down with the family and, and the patient, obviously, and saying, you know, let's say, is this Alzheimer's disease? Let's say it is yes. Then here are options, both for symptomatic treatment, but also for these new therapies. You know, we keep seeing all of these games that you can play on, mm -hmm. you know, your iPad or, you know, the luminosity and the different mm -hmm. games. Are they really worth it? How do you define worth it? <laughs> <laughs> Should I be playing these games that, uh, you know, nine out of 10 neurologists say you should be playing this game? Probably some, some activity there, but again, I, I actually think some of the literature suggests that getting out of the house, social interaction can be just as valuable, if not more so. Talking to people. Talking to people, being active, being engaged. The simplest thing we should all be doing. Yeah, absolutely. All right, final thoughts. What would you like people to take away? Um, I would say that if you're concerned about your memory, particularly as you get into the older ages, um, that getting an evaluation is really important. There's a lot of things that can cause memory disorders, and it's not all Alzheimer's disease, so don't be afraid. Sometimes it's as simple as making sure you don't have sleep apnea or making sure your thyroid's okay. These things can make a big difference. Wow, so you know those folks who are thinking about it more than once a year, you don't yeah. have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. All right, Dr. Leverance, thank you so much. Thanks again for having us. Still ahead, a new indication that someone is developing dementia, often seen years before the first symptoms show up. We'll explain, plus. There'll be times when I'll have to call my girlfriend and I'll be like, did I clock out from work? Because I'm like, I don't remember if I just did that. And I literally just left work three minutes ago. When some memory loss is normal, what you need to know to lessen the worry. People are living longer these days, and experts say the brain just can't hold on. Jeremy Baker takes a look at how exercise and socializing can help keep your brain healthy. The CDC estimates 6 million Americans are living with the disease, but while there's no cure, physical activity and being in the company of others can reduce the risk of developing Alzheimer's. 
There's Alzheimer's that can occur, you know, in individuals that are 80 plus. So when you live to be that age, you may very well be diagnosed that at a later stage in your life. A 2023 study by Johns Hopkins found that older adults who are socially isolated have a 27% higher chance of developing dementia over the next nine years. The National Academy of Sciences found social isolation contributed to a 50% increased risk of developing dementia and a 59% increased risk of functional decline. Exercise can slow further deterioration in those who have started to develop cognitive problems. And it doesn't have to be anything extreme. You don't have to have a gym membership. Even walking every day makes a difference and can keep your mind sharp for longer. The CDC says the number of adults age 65 or older is only expected to climb over the coming decades with this increase in the senior population. There's also an increase in cases of Alzheimer's, but physical activity and social engagement can reduce the risk of the disease by 50%, according to the Alzheimer's Research and Prevention Foundation. The lifestyle that you choose to live is going to impact your life later in life. It's never too early to start. A new report shows people who develop dementia often fall behind on their bills years before they're diagnosed with the disease. Researchers from Georgetown University found a year before people were diagnosed, more than 17% were likely to be late on their mortgage payments, and 34% were more likely to not pay their credit card bills on time. The study found evidence of people falling behind on their payments as much as five years years before doctors diagnose them with Alzheimer's. Many factors may influence your risk of dementia, but as with many diseases, there may be steps you can take to help lower your risk. Those steps include controlling your blood pressure, sleeping well, having a healthy, well-balanced diet, and keeping physically active and connecting with family and friends. If you think you're losing your memory, don't panic. There are a lot of reasons why we start forgetting words or names, and most of them, believe it or not, are completely normal. Rena Sarginopoulos has that story. It's a lot different, but I, I like it. A few years ago, Dana Nelson started a new job at Twin City EDM and Manufacturing. I am taking hand tools that we just got back from calibration. It's also about the same time she noticed she seemed to be a bit more forgetful. There'll be times when I'll have to call my girlfriend and I'll be like, did I clock out from work? Because I'm like, I don't remember if I just did that. And I literally just left work three minutes ago. Dana is perfectly able to do her job and do it well. But to be fair, she's got a lot going on. I'm juggling work on top of trying to remember orthodontics appointments, doctor appointments, football practice. Is my kid taking cold lunch today? I have to drive kids to work because they don't have licenses, that kind of thing. So it's not just my schedule, but it's three kids on top of it and a husband. This applies to men and women. We're just at that age, not any age specifically, but as we get older, we just have more in our lives, dealing with kids and aging parents and likely at a higher level at our jobs. Life just gets busier and that hits people and people think, I think busyness is loss of memory and it's like, you know, if you're trying to remember 100 things and you remember 90 things, you're probably doing pretty good, right? 10 years ago, you're only trying to remember 20 things. Dr. Sarah Benish is a neurologist with M Health Fairview and the U of M Medical School. She hears these kinds of fears all the time. I'll tell you the one thing that's gonna make your memory even worse is if you're stressed and worried about it. Super, so help me feel less worried. She says remove the stress and your memory will likely bounce back. We know, easier said than done. But there are some other very normal things that can be affecting your memory. Lack of sleep, too much alcohol, and hormone changes during periods menopause. Estrogen changes can change women's uh, cognitive functioning. They can feel like they're having a hard time keeping focus uh, with their um, remembering things, word finding. Been there, girlfriend, but oh wait, there's more. Some prescription drugs like those to treat seizures or migraines and even some over-the-counter drugs like cold medicines and sleep aids. But what about all the technology we use? Is that affecting our memory too? 
I can remember my childhood phone number, but couldn't tell you my mom's current cell phone number if my life depended on it. There are a lot of factors that can influence our memory. Dr. Ronald Peterson is the director of the Mayo Clinic Alzheimer's Disease Research Center and the Mayo Clinic Study of Aging, which has been ongoing for 20 years. He says for many reasons, limiting screen time is a good idea. And while there is no current science proving that our personal tech is worsening our memory, it is for sure rewiring our brains. It's quite likely that that the younger generations who are growing up with personal devices will have their brain networks develop in a different fashion than say older persons. And what the impact of that is going to be for aging, cognitive changes, memory loss, really is unknown at this point in time. What is known? Screen time, be it on your phone or in front of a TV, is sedentary. And being sedentary is linked to a higher risk of dementia. Now, after learning all of this, if you are still concerned, here's what you need to know. I think what you're looking for is a pattern. If it's just here or there, that's nothing to panic about. That's just normal aging. It's if it kind of starts to have bigger consequences and it keeps happening again and again. There's no standard baseline because we're all so different have different things going on in our lives, including family history. So it's important to know what's normal for you. If you notice you're changing and somebody who knows you well notices you're changing, then that may involve a further investigation. First stop, your primary care doc, who can evaluate and determine if more testing is needed. But again, don't stress. Most of what you're experiencing is completely normal. I think having a brighter outlook on aging, keeping a sense of humor, can all be very beneficial for enhancing your quality of life as you age. Sorry. <laughs> Wrong drawer. See, forgetful. Dana's already following that advice, laughing it off as just part of life. Like, there should be a pill. It's no fair. Like, how come we don't have things to help us? Well, that'll do it for this edition of Prescription for Life. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Monica Robbins, wishing you and yours good health. Thank you so much for tuning into Health Yeah. Please find me on Twitter and Instagram at Monica Robbins. Like and follow my Facebook page, Monica Robbins WKYC. Find video podcasts at Monica Robbins channel on YouTube. And please subscribe. Wishing you great health and hope to see you again soon. Thanks for listening to Health Yeah! with Monica Robbins from WKYC Studios. Subscribe now so you never miss an update. And find more on everything you heard here on WKYC.com and on the WKYC app.